There is a Republican lawmaker in Oklahoma who argued this week that it should be legal for public school teachers to beat students with disabilities in their classroom because not doing so, he said, would be unbiblical. And I need to back up because there's a lot packed into that sentence right there. The deal with Oklahoma right now is that it currently does allow corporal punishment in public schools, which is to say it allows teachers to like paddle, hit, spank a kid in school. It's legal. Doesn't mean teachers are going to do it, but it is legal. Now, that is a problem in and of itself, but the law at least has a carve out and says you're not allowed to hit kids with, and I'm quoting here, the most significant cognitive disabilities. <laughs> so if they're really struggling with something, you're not allowed to touch them. But everyone else, if they're acting up, spank them all you want, right? Um, and again, why wouldn't you want, why does the law say you can't hit kids with significant cognitive disabilities? Obviously, because they may not even understand that they're doing something wrong. So at that point, you're just hitting them for no reason. They don't understand it. And if they don't understand it, why are you doing it? So anyway, even Republicans in Oklahoma are like, you guys, this makes us look really bad. We should fix this law. And last year, they did try to fix this law, but they did not fix it to say we should like not hit kids. We should definitely not let teachers hit kids. That would have been the correct answer. No, these are Republicans in Oklahoma. They did not go that far. No, instead, what they said is, why don't we make the exemption a little broader? Why don't we say, of course, teachers, of course you can hit kids. But instead of just saying you can't hit kids with significant cognitive disabilities, what if we say you can't hit any kid with any disability? Doesn't matter how significant it is. And this was their way of fixing the problem. It is messed up. So basically, if your kid has an individualized uh, education program, like an IEP, they have some kind of disability, regardless of what it is, the revised law would say, all right, you're not allowed to hit them either. So yeah, it is an improvement over the current law, but it's still a shitty law, right? Okay, but that's what they tried to do last year. And the thing is, uh, one Republican even signed on as a co-sponsor of this bill specifically because, and I'm quoting here, he said, there's going to be nobody who's for corporal punishment on students with disabilities. This Republican thought it was going to be an easy vote. So he's like, sign me up. I'm going to be a sponsor of this bill. And then maybe he realized, oh, right, Republicans in Oklahoma, like they will always find a way to defend abuse in the name of Jesus. So here's what happened last year. Um, last year, there was a state representative, Jim Olson. He's a Republican. He argued that the Bible allows you to hit kids as a form of discipline. He cited Proverbs uh, chapter 13, verse 24, which is the verse that gives us spare the rod, spoil the child. So he says, look, the Bible says we got to hit kids to keep them in line. And somebody challenged him at the time. They shared this with him. This is the American Academy of Pediatrics. And basically, this is an old news release. I think it's from uh, 2018. Yeah, and it says, spanking harms children. And you could see the, the headline there. In an updated policy statement on corporal punishment, the American Academy of Pediatrics points to mounting evidence that supports its call to ban physical discipline. And so someone else raised this to the Republican person who was arguing for this bill. And what did uh, Jim Olson say? Jim Olson said it didn't matter because, and I'm quoting here, God's counsel is higher than the American Academy of Pediatrics. Um, there was another Republican, Randy Randleman, who said teachers need the threat of corporal punishment in order to keep their classrooms in order. But like, okay, I was a teacher in a public school for several years. If your classroom is so chaotic that physical discipline is your only solution, you're a bad teacher. And if you think threatening kids, kids with disabilities, no less, by hitting them uh, 
is your only way to keep them in line, then you're a shitty parent. And if you think giving parents and teachers the right to team up to beat up children with disabilities is the best way to correct their behavior, like you're a shitty politician too. So here's the thing. That bill, it did make it through the Oklahoma State House easily. Um, it was amended a little bit, and it said parents had to sign off on whether teachers could uh, hit kids with disabilities or something like that. Parents got the final say. Teachers can't just beat them on their own, which, all right. That bill was heading to the state Senate. And again, you would think, all right, maybe some idiots are going to fight against this, but it should pass. And then it just sat there. And nothing happened with this bill for like over a year until this week when senators finally brought it up for discussion. And this time they got rid of the opt-in clause for parents, which is a good move. They basically said, we don't care if parents say it's okay to beat kids with disabilities. How about we just amend the bill we're talking about and just say, just don't hit kids with disabilities. Teachers, we don't care if the parents give you a green light, you still can't do it. So again, good. That was the right move. Um, and I want to show you this bill because I want to show you what it actually says inside of it. Um, this is what the bill says. Here we go. This is the text of the bill. You can see here we are talking about House Bill 1028 up here. And if I scroll down a little bit, here's what they're changing. School district personnel shall be prohibited from using corporal punishment, which means hitting, slapping, paddling, or any other means of inflicting physical pain on students. You can't do it if, if what? Look, you could see they crossed out the most significant cognitive disabilities. They crossed it out and they replaced it with you can't hit kids with a disability under state and federal regulations. Who has a disability? Well, they lay it out for us. For the purposes of this section, a disability includes autism, deaf blindness, deafness, emotional disturbance, hearing impairment, etc. It goes on for a while. Anyone who has a 504 plan, an IEP, you cannot hit them. So good. Again, better bill would say, how about just don't hit kids? But as far as this goes, all right, it's better than what they had in place. So this is the bill they were going to consider. Um, by the way, I want to point out, that means hitting, slapping, paddling, or physically punishing other kids still on the table. Teachers can still do that if they feel like it. It is horrible. But anyway, this week on Tuesday, when they were discussing this bill in the Oklahoma uh, State Legislature, there was a representative who decided to uh, defend the abuse of children with disabilities, all in the name of Jesus. Uh, let me show you a couple clips of what he is saying here. Uh, let me find this right here. Here's the first clip. This is Shane Jett, and Shane Jett is um, a Oklahoma state senator from Oklahoma. So yeah, let me play you this first clip from uh, Shane Jett. Effectively, we're taking a tool that has been in the hands of parents and in the hands of schools to maintain discipline. And we're removing it from the parents' prerogative and saying, we, big brother, the state of Oklahoma, knows what's best for your child. And we're removing an entire motivational tool from discipline in the classroom. We're removing an entire motivational tool. That's what he thinks hitting kids is. It's a motivational tool. Sure, some people use motivational speeches. Some teachers, like the ones you see in movies, will inspire kids to do their very best. But in this guy's view, uh, the best way to motivate kids is by holding up a paddle or a stick or beating them with a belt or something. That's what he thinks parents ought to be doing. And having the state pass a law saying, maybe in some cases you shouldn't do that. Well, that's just big brother right there telling teachers, 
uh, they know what's best for children, that the government knows what's best. Ridiculous. Um, Shane Jett later, this went on for like 20 minutes, but later in his rant, he brings up the fact that one reason people now believe spanking kids is wrong, not just the Academy of Pediatrics I mentioned, but uh, Dr. Benjamin Spock, the famous doctor who wrote about raising your kids. It's like the famous baby book uh, who said, don't hit your kids. And so next, Shane Jett brought up Benjamin Spock and why we should not listen to him. And this is an erosive and a corrosive element in the United States whenever Dr. Benjamin Spock published a book that said, don't discipline your children, don't spank your children. And a lot of people don't know that his voice was elevated because it fit a particular agenda. Dr. Benjamin Spock was a socialist who ran for the People's Party. That means he's a communist. <laughs> he's, he's a communist. If you don't hit your kids, you're a dirty commie socialist Bernie bro or something like that. Such a dumb thing. I had to look this up because I didn't know it. Like, what exactly did Dr. Uh, Spock think about politics beyond, I mean, I, I know what he said about babies, I guess, but I really didn't know his other political views. Let me tell you what he was for. He pushed for universal health care, the decriminalization of abortion, the decriminalization of homosexuality, guaranteed income for families, and an end to the stupid war in Vietnam. That guy sounds great, but apparently he's evil. <laughs> And we can't listen to him. Uh, Shane Jett also argued that if we love children, then we should be allowed to abuse them. Uh, and then, of course, he quoted the Bible. I already cited Proverbs 13, 24. Whoever spares the rod hates their child, but he who loves them disciplines them. And we're saying the state of Oklahoma has unilaterally decided if, if you have vision impairment, you cannot be disciplined, even if your parents want that. We're going to unilaterally take that away from our schools and our parents, more importantly. If you, have, if you are hearing impaired, suddenly you're in a different class, you cannot be disciplined. And we've already made it abundantly clear that children can mis misbehave regardless of their abilities or inabilities, capabilities or incapabilities. Are we sending a message that we don't love our children? Do we not love our... I thought we loved our kids, and that's why we hit them, is something an abuser says all the time. I want to... Did you hear what he said? Are we seriously saying that if you have vision impairment and you're blind, you cannot be disciplined? Why do blind people get all the breaks here? Well, if you're hearing impaired, what? You can't be whipped? Even if your parents want you to be? Oh my God, these are actually his arguments that a real human politician made on the floor of the legislature. Uh, and then he summarized it all and said, if we don't allow teachers to beat up kids with disabilities, society will crumble. At the end of the day, you're looking at socialist slash communist principles versus biblical principles, Jewish culture, Christian culture, and any common sense culture understands that if you don't discipline children or you create a class of children that cannot be disciplined, those discipline problems are going to cascade through the rest of society and we're seeing that now from Dr. Spock telling Christian parents, don't spank your children. And they follow Dr. Spock instead of the Bible. Dr. Spock was a communist who ran for president with the Communist Party. This is communist ideology. I urge you to vote against this bill. It is bad public policy. And then, you know, in his mind, he's thinking, yeah, drop the mic. And everyone's like, what is wrong with you? Um, I have heard some people say, and I'm sure someone like him would have said this too, like, I was spanked as a kid and I churned out fine. That's why we need to keep allowing it to happen. But if you grew up to be the sort of person who says we should hit kids, especially kids with disabilities, you didn't turn out fine. You're messed up. So this guy is saying, what, what, we want to protect society. We got to... 
We got to discipline the kids who are blind and deaf. Helen Keller had too easy of a life. We need to make sure she gets it. And the thing is, I know this guy seems completely messed up, but everything he's talking about is so, I mean, if you've grew up in fundamentalist Christian circles, none of that is weird because you know you've seen this stuff before. Um, this is, of course, the infamous book to train up a child by Michael and Debbie Pearl, where they literally told, I mean, that's a best-selling book in fundy circles. They literally told parents how, like how long your paddle should be when you're hitting your kids, um, how to properly hit them. I mean, it is as awful as it sounds too, because I was really curious. Maybe this law is in the books that teachers can hit their kids, but does that actually happen well, guess what? We have numbers to, to answer that question. Check this out. This is from McAllister uh, News that did a long story about this issue. Oklahoma educators reported using physical discipline 3,968 times during the 2017-2018 school year, according to the most recent federal data available from the Office of Civil Rights in the U.S. Department of Education. The federal government reported that corporal punishment was administered at more than 1,800 Oklahoma schools. So 1,800 schools, almost 4,000 whippings or something. Like this is not something that maybe one or two really horrible teachers did to rowdy kids. This is something endemic in Oklahoma schools and these legislators are like, well, we could just say you're not allowed to do that. But why don't we say, how about don't hit kids who are disabled in some way? And then you still have Republicans like, no, 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 no. We got to make sure whipping is always on the table. Let's bring back lynching while we're at it, too. Um, I had I also wanted to look this up to the same guy, uh, Shane Jett. Check this out. He he appeared on Glenn Beck's show last a couple years ago. Glenn Beck interviews Senator Jett about his legislation to remove critical race theory from Oklahoma classrooms. So apparently, uh, you know, you can't, you got to be protected. Kids have to be protected from learning about systemic racism. But we got to make sure teachers have the option to beat kids with disabilities because who, they don't need protection from that. No, no, no. It's far worse than what's in their history books or something. All because the Christian faith, the conservatives believe that their Christian faith teaches them abuse is more effective than compassion. So this guy, Shane Jett, he kept talking. I'm, we're not done with him. And then he said, there are people in this room who basically oppose what I'm saying here. And they say it's foolish. Uh, to fight this bill. So he had a message for them too. You want to talk about foolishness? We've been talking about foolishness. Foolishness is calling miscarriages abortions. Foolishness is calling transgender sterilization affirmation. Foolishness is killing a baby in the mommy's womb and calling it women's health. Foolishness. I mean, there are people who are trying to make the argument to legislators that when a woman suffers a miscarriage, the procedure she has to go through amounts to an abortion. So when you ban abortion, you're also saying women who have miscarriages out of their control, they can't get health care either. So he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, you two are trying to equate those things. That's foolish. And trans people getting health care is foolish. Uh, and what did he say? He said calling it women's health when you give them control over their bodies. That's foolish. Like, it's not, he's not just a bigot. He's also a misogynist, all because he is a Christian who is bathed in the blood of Christ or some weird bullshit like that. By the way, I looked this up too. Um, literally, this is from, uh, there we go, The Frontier. Look at the first paragraph of this article. Thousands of women have traveled out of state or ordered abortion pills online to end pregnancies in the year and a half since Oklahoma banned most abortions. Like, this is real life. These people are literally forcing women to get out of Oklahoma to receive health care 
because lawmakers there don't want them to have it because they are Republican. And I guess there is a little bit of good news here, uh, which is that in the state Senate, uh, here's a little update for you. Despite everything Shane Jett said, the bill passed 31 to 11. Uh, and I remember I told you the Senate removed that little uh, change in the law that said parents had to opt in. They said, no, we don't care what the parents say. Teachers just can't hit children with disabilities because that is a change and it's a good change, relatively speaking. It has to go back to the House because it was revised. Uh, this is a real problem. If these people don't want to help people. They don't want to help women. We already knew that. They don't want to help trans people. We we knew that. And now they don't want to help kids with disabilities. They would rather see them get hurt. Again, I know this bill passed and it should pass and it should get signed into law. But the fact that there are not just one dude, but like 11 Republicans who aligned with that guy and probably a few more in the, the House when they vote on it, that should disturb everybody. And I know it's Oklahoma. It's a long uphill climb to get rid of the Republicans in that state. But come on, how do you support that sort of rhetoric? It's just despicable. Corporal punishment is still going to be legal in Oklahoma, which is a travesty. But the least you could do is to, is say, how about we let some kids off the hook because maybe they don't have, uh, maybe they don't necessarily know what they're doing uh, when it comes to dis uh, discipline. Maybe they're struggling with other stuff. Maybe we shouldn't make their life worse. Okay, I'm going to stop there for a bit. Let's take some questions here. Uh, never, ever hit special needs kids. I agree. And also, you don't, need the, you don't need special needs in there. How about don't hit kids? How about don't hit other people? Like, that's, sh my God, if you're working in education and the thought has crossed your mind, I should beat this child, get out, find a different job. Is there a trial of some kind by the school admin or is it going directly to lashing out with violence because of your abusive ego? You know what? I don't think there's any trial. I don't think I don't know what the rule is, but I don't think there are limitations on when teachers can paddle you or whip you. I would hope they like send you to the principal's office first. But then maybe the principal beats you. I don't know how it works because I didn't teach at a shitty school or in a shitty state. Sounds like. Johnson is a funny voice for politicians. That Shane Jett sounds like Johnson, who sounds like Katie Britt, who sounds like all of them uh, with that voice. That's a good question. I wonder what the male version of uh, funny voice is. I don't know. It's got to be like that. Slightly higher pitched. Hmm, I don't know. Hitting children only teaches them to get better at hiding things. It does not make them grow up to be good people. Yeah, I am I believe you 100% there. Like, if you know discipline is awaiting you, then your best course of action is to hide things from your parents because telling them the truth is not going to be on your side. So, I mean, it it's bad parenting for a number of reasons, but the fact that your kids will never trust you and they won't come to you with anything if they actually need help, that should be one of the more disturbing elements of that. Uh, I can have a gun and beat on the kids. I should have been. <laughs> I knew I should have been a teacher. Yeah, man, Oklahoma schools will let you do anything in the classroom except teach facts. <laughs> I was spanked as a kid, and it never taught me anything other than how to avoid getting caught. Right on. Yep, right there with you. That's exactly what we're saying. Just a dumb idea all around. Why should it be okay to hit children if we rightly recognize that hitting adults is assault? Great question, Carrie. Uh, because they're young. And the funny thing is all these people are pro-life and their argument for being pro-life is they're innocent. They're babies. They, they need their fetuses. They need to be protected because they're innocent. It's our job to defend them on their behalf. Oh, they're born. All right. Whip them. Who cares? We can paddle them. They don't need what they don't need defense. They don't need us to come to their defense. They can take it. It's it's a six-month-old baby to train up a child. That's what that book teaches. My God. Uh, tune into any Mormon general conference, and you'll learn exactly how the male funny voice sounds, which is impressive coming from, like, men who are 137 years old. <laughs> 